And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O R D hyphen oracle.com. That's Ord hyphen oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Well, it's not a lot. We're going into a you know a holiday three day weekend. Good Friday markets are closed, which he is this Friday. So let's, let's start looking at the bigger picture again. Chart one, we, we went. Uh, we talked about it the last uh, last Thursday, and we'll, yes. we'll just briefly uh, look at it uh, quickly. And all it is is the, uh, the the middle chart. There is the monthly SPY. And when 50% uh, of the trading range closes above the upper Bollinger Band, okay. usually the next month, uh, which is this month, is usually a sideways month, you know, sometimes a down month. And so far, we're still up. And um, But I, I still, uh, we'll, we'll go on. But uh, so far, we got, what, two more days to go. But I still think we're going to kind of close unchanged for the uh, month, even though uh, we're up right now. I'll show you why here in a couple of Okay, cool. A couple of the charts. But second window up from the bottom is the SPX VIX ratio. Yes. And what what this ratio usually does is when the S&P uh, is making higher highs and this ratio is making lower highs, usually that's a bearish intermediate term sign. And I noted uh, the times going back to uh, 2017, whatever. But uh, so, But right now, if you go to the far right, uh, the SPs are making higher highs, and this ratio is making higher highs. I know. I just saw this. So, okay, so this is kind of interesting, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So it's bullish. So right. But so I, I'm not looking for a big decline here. You know, just uh, I think we're going to go back to the March first uh, uh, open. That's what I'm thinking. But but anyhow, intermediate term is fine. But you can have you know uh, consolidations that may last a week, and maybe two at most. But that'd be it. And then probably the market's going to go higher. So ultimately, we are going to head higher. So that's bullish. Uh, so let's flip to chart two. Okay. Uh, chart two. Now this, now this is the daily chart. This is a short-term uh, type. Uh, so here's what I'm thinking anyhow. I, I'm out of the market right now. But uh, on the SP chart, this is the SPY chart, every time you close above the upper Bollinger Band, which we did here last uh, Thursday, or I think it was. Normally, you get a consolidation, and those blue arrow, area, arrows show the times when the close was above the upper Bollinger Band. And okay. this is on a daily, so it's not a monthly, but it's a daily. So last, I think it was Thursday, we closed above the mid Bollinger Band, and since Thursday, we're pretty much unchanged. We haven't re really made any progress, but. Do some volume studies here. Well, another, another thing too. Now, if you go up the second window up from the bottom, yes, is, is the VIX. Now, every time the VIX closes above or, or below is upper upper Bollinger or, or closes above the upper Bollinger band, or closes below the Bollinger band. We didn't close below it, but we did hit below it um, last Friday, I think it was. And that's also a, a warning and. Um, I didn't really draw lines on the chart to show when no, the, see the SPs yep, we can the VIX went above or below because the chart gets real messy after that and you can't really see what's going on. So I just circled it there. Uh, so we got a close above the Bollinger Band on the SPY and we didn't close below it, but we did hit below it on the VIX. So it's kind of a, I don't know, a double whammy is not the right word, but it's a evidence that you're probably upsize limited here. So let's go back to uh, March 8th, which is that blue line on the chart there. Okay, yeah. Okay, that bar, that volume was relatively high. And uh, yes, it was. Dotted red line going across horizontally is a high of that day. Okay. And uh, so if you compare the volume of that day and compare it to the volume, which is the next circle on the red circle on the volume chart, it broke above that high on lighter volume. You can see it's probably yes. a good 20% lighter. Okay, that's usually a false breakout. You usually come back down. And if we close below that high, which is that dotted line, horizontal dotted line, you go back down to where 
the previous lows are, which is that blue line right below there. That's, that's what I got a scenario. I I'm it. thinking that's what's going to happen here in the next couple, three days. Uh, the SP right now, we're pretty much where we are unchanged right now, according to my uh, chart. Yeah, that's correct. But I'm thinking yeah. we're going to go back down, uh, which is that blue lines. I got scenario there. And if you go back down to where that previous low was, which is basically that March 8th low again, which is where that dotted blue line is, that's also where pretty much close where the March open was, which is, uh, if you look where March is, uh, beginning of March. Yes. That's so I'm thinking that's where we're going to go, and we probably draw a doji this month. So we got a couple of days left. We got you know tomorrow and Thursday. Friday's markets are closed, but I'm betting we go back to the March open, and I think that'll be a low. Nothing real significant to the downside, but you got closes above uh, uh, the upper Bollinger Bands. Usually you get a a week or so of consolidation, sometimes two. Uh, so I'm thinking that's what's going to happen. Uh, nothing real significant. And if you look at the bottom window, we're, uh, I think if we do get a pullback down to that blue line, which is around 507 on the SPYs, I'm thinking that pullback will get the trend, to, uh, the two day trend, yes. hopefully up around 1.4, you know, at least 1.25 up in that vicinity and line up for the next rally. Because I, I think bigger trends up, short term trend. I think it's sideways to, to minor pullback. Then we're going to start, you know, going up again. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see our. Yeah, you can see, Tim, that the last couple of days, I mean, we don't have any buyers. No, we have any sellers. I mean, it came down no. yesterday. The, the volume was anemic. It was, I mean, it rejected lower price down there. Do you know what I mean? Which is really wild, man. And Yeah. I'm, know, I'm, I'm curious, you know, when we, we come back on Thursday. Yeah, I, I got a, you know, it's not a huge pullback, but the 507 on the SPY is a decent pullback. Oh, yeah. And it's only got a couple of days to go. And also, a lot of times you go into holidays, Yeah. You know, a lot of times you see a high or a low. Because the volume, if you're going up, the volume drops out. So, a high, you know, light volume yeah. highs are bearish. If you're going down, it would be bullish because light volume downs are bullish because there's really no energy pushing down. Exactly. So, uh, I'm thinking that there could be a pullback here, so... Just stay uh, right there, folks. Tim and I here. are coming right back. Oh. And uh, I'll tell you, man, <laughs> this market is something else. You get the Dow Industrials right now trading up 17. NASDAQ's down 15. S&Ps are off 3.5. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Stay right there. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tom, uh, Tim Oyd, Tom O'Brien, we do appreciate your growling and prowling with us. And tomorrow, folks, at 3.20, I'm going to have uh, Fred Ernest, the CEO of Vista Gold on. So check it out. Put it in your uh, calendar at 3.20 tomorrow. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Oyd, right now. We are talking markets, and we are talking, let's see, Tim, I got the, the third chart up, I believe. Third, yeah, third chart. Uh, this is the uh, monthly SPX. And just uh, kind of uh, a rehash, I think, uh, the, anyhow, from the March of 2020 low yes. up to the high of 2022, the market pulled back about a 50% retracement. And so 50% uh, retracement, a lot of times, is a halfway point of the next move up. Right. And I thought uh, it's a head and shoulders pattern that's forming there. I got the... Uh, the head was basically the 2022 low. Yes. Uh, the right shoulder was uh, approximately the January of 2022. The left shoulder, or the right shoulder, excuse me, of, was July, October of 2023. We had a, a, a butt through the neckline, which is around 4,600. If you do all the, yeah, the measurement stuff, you come around with 5,700. And, you know, we're in a 5,200 category right now, so in my opinion, we got another 500 uh, points to go, uh, which is, you know, a good 10% or better to go. So oh, I think yeah. That's where we're and going. that, this yeah. is, you know, if you're watching Target TV here, folks, and taking a look at Tim's chart, that is one clean head, man. I mean, it really, yeah. it's, it's pretty impressive. I mean, do you know what I mean? Because, like, when you do technical analysis, folks, they always don't come out as pretty as this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, they don't. So, and also worth knowing, you know, the by the bottom window there is that VIX thing, SPX VIX ratio. Yes. And if you notice, as as we're making higher highs, this ratio is making higher highs. So the bigger trend's up. Yeah. So pretty amazing. Um, it's nothing really 
say other than that. So you'll get some warning signs um, and probably with a SPX VIX ratio before the high, the high actually happens. Okay. So right now everything seems to be just fine. So uh, let's go on to uh, chart four. Okay. Um, there's a couple of different things here. I circled, uh, okay, this is, there's a lot of different indicators I use on the gold market. Yes. And I got several of them right now are triggering uh, longer term buy signals. And this is one of them. This is uh, the weekly inflation deflation ratio. And I use the RSI, uh, just a normal RSI 14. And all those blue lines across there are times when the RSI of this inflation deflation ratio got below 30 and turned up. And that's what those blue lines are. Okay. What I want to point out. If you look back, I got two. Uh, the bottom window is GDX, weekly GDX. Next window up is the weekly XAU. And I got circles where all the buy signals happen. Yes. And I circled two in bold. The current one were in bold. Okay. And the one back in 2016 low. Oh, I see. I, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. On That would be on the total left-hand side of this chart, folks. Okay, cool. Yep. Wow. Yeah, so... What I want to point out, we pretty much, you know, we got a signal, um, it's hard to say, it looks like about July, August maybe, somewhere in there. Then you got another one like first or December of 2000 or January 2016. So you had two signals in there. The market just went sideways. You hit one, market went sideways, got another one, and then the big rally started. Well, pretty much exactly what's happening now, time-wise and everything, we had a signal back in uh say October of last year, pretty close to where we are right now. And we got another one just here basically a couple of weeks ago, or, you know, uh, mid-March, early March, whatever. And then pretty much the exact same place in price. So I wanted to point that out. I know. Out. Look at that. Wow. So you, okay. Yeah. So you, most of the time, you know, you get a signal and you get a rally. But here you got a signal, went sideways, and you got a signal pretty much the same price again. And uh, so I'm curious if that's going to work out to be similar what happened in 2016, where the market really just rocketed up. Yeah, it did. It and did. and yeah. so I don't know. Uh, but I just wanted to point out, either way, we're still on a bicycle. We're but you want to be prepared, think, folks. That's the bottom line, because uh, <laughs> this is a nice setup. Okay, cool, man. Yep. Yeah, so... And we actually, uh, on the radio, on your show, I think we, we talked about that October low, got a bicycle, market rallied back up, came right back down again. We did. Didn't really we did. do anything. It, and a lot of people say, well, it's a failed signal. And eh, it's, this, these signals on this, this type of method works usually pretty well. So I'm thinking we're just building quite a bit of cause here. Yep. And you got two signals back to back at the same price. So to me, that's not bearish. So, um, and, and what happens, and folks, okay, as Tim's saying, building cause, you know, you just need patience because building cause is one of the coolest things in the marketplace now, and that's either up or down. And once you start wrapping your head around it and not worrying about the time aspect of it, um, you can see how the, the, the energy gets built up. It's just pretty wild, yeah. you know. I remember yeah. Tim so well, and I know I've told you this before and told the audience, I remember the time. Like, I'm going back to 96 or something, and you're saying to me, yeah, well, it's going to build cars. We probably need three or four months. I'm saying, three or four months? I didn't have three or four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of different types of uh, signals going on here. But, yeah. but, yeah, I wanted to point that out. I thought, you know, it's got two signals, same prices, and, uh, and the last thing we had this type, you know, you only got you know, one other example I could find. But I thought that, you know, it was worth noting. But anyway, No, it is. It is, yeah. This method is on a buy signal. Cool. So let's go, let's flip to uh, chart number five. Okay. And uh, this is the H-E-U, uh, H, or H-U-I gold H ratio, and it's on the weekly time frame. And uh, what I did there was uh, same kind of the same thing. I did an RSI uh, so when the RSI of this ratio falls below 30 and turns up, you get a buy signal. And this chart goes all the way back to 1999. So it's a long time, and it, it picks out some really pretty good signals over the years. And uh, it gave a signal back in October of 2022 um, on the HUI, and a lot of different longer-term signals that have triggered back probably four at least four signals that 
go back to that October low of 2022. I keep saying that's probably an important low. And if you look at HUI, you haven't broke that low. Right. So I, I think we kind of had a sign of strength off that low, and the market's been in the consolidation phase. Uh, but, but anyhow, I wanted to point out on this chart, if you look at the uh, mid-window, which is the uh, weekly HUI gold ratio, is that, <coughs> excuse me, is that the same value that it was back in 2016? Right. Uh, I got that circled there. So, you know, and that's, and going back to 1999, that's as cheap as it's ever been. So the HUI is matching the value because, you know, this is a value situation. Right. And, you know, when, when this, you know, uh, HUI to gold ratio, in other words, gold stocks, are as cheap as it is now as it was in 2016. That's amazing, man. Yep. Yeah, so so I'm thinking, is that relevant? Yeah, I'm thinking it is relevant here. So I, I, I kind of noticed that, you know, valuation-wise, this should have a, an effect on the market, I think. Uh, so we'll wait and see. I, I can wait. We've got another chart awesome. to go. Yeah, they, you know, folks, okay, this is really intriguing how... Tim's to, because, you know, the, the GDX, the HUI, the XAU, they're all off their lows. But yet, when you look at these ratios, you can see that this is just the beginning of the market. Not <laughs> So this is pretty cool. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. We have the Dow down 2, NASDAQ off 31, S&P's down 7.5. Tim and I come right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim with Tom O'Brien. So the chart I have up right now, Tim, is the uh, RSI HUI. Hey, Joe, I go to chart number six. Okay. You're done with that? Yep. Uh, chart number six is actually the weekly XAU gold ratio. Yes. It gave a buy signal just like it should because HUI did, you know, XAU we expect it did. Yes. So it's on a buy signal. And I went back and measured all the times this particular chart gave a buy signal. Okay. And the minimum time that uh, that, that bull run, once, once you got a signal from this method, it ran at least six months i like it so yep so that would be that would take you late to september and so between now and september now if you go to the bottom window is the xau chart yes if we can get above that blue line you should see a sign of strength through that blue line right so the market in my opinion if the market can rally for the next two three months which i think it will i think it'll rally probably till september according to this study you know, both of them lasted six months, but not longer. You have to have a sign of strength through that blue line. So that would imply that the market should get actually stronger in the coming months and and not weaker. So we will do picking a different, up steam. Have yes. a change of character, I'm thinking, of what's coming. Right. So, yeah. And also, uh, if you go back to the, uh, the middle window, which is the weekly XAU gold ratio, I think that ratio should get back to at least 0.7. Okay. Because the previous signals of this type all at least got back to that point. So um, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's a little bit confusing for everybody. No, 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 no. Uh, it wasn't. See, you, went, you know what I was just looking at, Tim? So this is amazing. So the, the gold report's 22 years old <clears throat> this week. Uh -huh. And when you just brought up that aspect, I, I, I remember the first run in gold, and sure enough, I, I just brought this chart up, Tim, right? And sure enough, it started in March and went all the way till October. And that's when, right listen, folks, that's when gold went from 254 to 327. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot, but trust me, it is percentage-wise because the stocks went through the moon, man. <laughs> Tim, yeah. it's always a pleasure. Happy Easter. You have a great one, safe one. Eat lots of food, have lots of fun, get lots of bunny rabbits, and I'll talk to you Tuesday. Tuesday.